What's going on guys, Castor right here, and in this video we are going to be talking about the three releases that we know Sony is going to announce in 2021. Three pretty exciting cameras that we actually have discussed right here in the channel. Let me tell you everything that we know and the rumors that have been lingering around coming right up. Welcome back to the channel guys, Castor right here, and if you're new to this place, let me remind you, as you know, that I'll be giving away this camera in just about a couple of days. The Sony a7C, and all you have to do to win one of these cameras is simply subscribe to this channel, enable notifications, and you must follow me on Instagram and Twitter, at Gaston Shutters. I'll be making the announcement on Christmas, and this one is a worldwide announcement. Now let's talk about one of the first cameras that we know for a fact Sony is going to be announcing. There have been a lot of rumors. And Unfortunately, it's not the Sony a7 IV, and we're gonna talk about this camera in just a moment. But one of the cameras that actually um, has been, you know, in the mouth of every YouTuber lately has been the A9 III or A9X. We like to call it the A9RS for the following reasons. Now, the A9 series is a camera that sports a 24 megapixel. It's a camera with a super fast buffer, great for documentary, sports photography, wedding photography, and the whole nine yard. Now, the 24 megapixel is what's actually made this camera, you know, a fast shooting camera. But the A93 or A9X or RS, like we're gonna call it, is going to have apparently a 50 megapixel sensor. And we have heard this from multiple uh, sources. You know, one of our sources from Asia confirms exactly the same thing. And then what we were able to cross reference with other rumor sites seems to be in line with what we're hearing. So 50 megapixel versus 24 megapixel, obviously it's more than double the megapixel count. And there are a couple of things that came up to my mind is how is this camera going to be the uh, third generation of the A9 line when this camera is gonna have actually a higher megapixel and perhaps this camera is gonna be slower and actually not so fast at low light situations. Well, the answer is actually pretty simple. In fact, Sony can actually make a 50 megapixel camera, especially with the latest technology that they have been developing and probably use some sort of quad bayer technology to give you a resolution, but at the same time, you know, try to use those group of pixels as a larger pixel, therefore gathering a little bit more light. I mean, I'm not an expert when it comes to quad bayer sensors, but for what I was able to understand, that seems something that it could be possible. But if that's the case, it's not gonna be, you know, 50. Most likely it's going to be 40A. So 12 times four, 48 quad bayer is the array of the pixel, you know, pretty, uh, pretty interesting stuff. I'm gonna link to a link in the description. Now, if you remember the Sony a7 S3, that camera features the dual card slot that is compatible with CF Express Type A and also with SD card UHS 2. So, but then if they're going to be using the CF Express Type A, then resolution is not going to be so much of an issue because it's way faster than SD card. So, in reality, we can get actually the best of both worlds: high megapixel resolution, you know, a very great low light performer camera, and also a camera with a super fast buffer. But the thing that strikes me the most is the rumor that this camera is going to be Sony's first AK camera. So this camera apparently is going to do AK video up to 30p and Sony Alpha rumor calls it an AK in its infant mode because it's not going to do 60p or anything higher than that. So some of the things that we could see in this camera is yes indeed AK video up to 30p and perhaps in its infant mode it means that you're going to be able to shoot maybe three minutes, four minutes, five minutes, you know, whatever, you know, whatever time Sony finds that is allowable for that camera without overheating. And you're gonna get just that, but chances are that they're gonna advertise that. You know, the moment that camera comes out, they're gonna tell you, this one is gonna be a 4K machine, but guess what? We're gonna give you a couple of minutes AK video so you can sample, you know, what we're working on and what you should expect from, uh, you know, upcoming cameras. I think that if they go with that approach, they're gonna have a winner right here with the A93. Now, there's a lot more to say about this camera. You know, we are going to have the EBF that the Sony A7S III actually has right now, which is 9.44 million dots in resolution. I mean, I've never heard anything like that. I have it in my Sony A7S III, and it just looks incredible. So, yes, for a camera that's gonna cost probably $4,500 or more, because remember, the A9 line started at $4,500 Obviously now you can get it for a lot less, but this camera is probably gonna be at around that price or even more. So 
This is the reason why I think that we're gonna have some sort of uh, AK video in this camera because this one perhaps is going to be the flagship camera that can actually do it all kind of like the uh, highest end, you know, hybrid shooting camera. So the A93 apparently is scheduled to be announced sometimes in January, so we should hear about that camera very, very soon. All right, so let's talk about the second camera right now. And no, it's not the Sony a7 IV because we're going to be talking about that camera in just a moment. But first, let's talk about a camera that most likely is going to be the second announcement from Sony. And this one is going to be the RX100 Mark VIII, right? And we have covered that rumor, you know, a year ago almost. And we thought that we were getting this camera, but we got the ZV-1. Now, some of the features that we actually were talking about that our X100 Mark A were a lot of the features that the Sony ZV-1 has, but can Sony actually make a camera more important than the Sony ZV-1 that right now you can get it for $750 versus the Sony RX100 Mark 7, for example, that costed at the time almost $1,200. So can Sony make people spend more money for a camera that probably is gonna have some slightly the same features? So one thing that I think that it could be happening here is, I believe this is possible, but probably we are gonna have the very first RX100 camera, one inch sensor camera ever, period, actually featuring 10-bit video. Now, can you imagine that having 4K 10-bit and maybe Sony's able to push the same technology and give us maybe 4K up to 60p in such a tiny camera, 10-bit, now I think we're talking about this. So we have in the ZV-1 the new screen, you know, we have a much lighter body, a camera that is aimed to vloggers with a, you know, product showcase feature. So a camera that has a lot of features and in reality has more features than the RX100 Mark 7. Yes, the construction is a little bit plasticky, but I think that Sony is gonna be dropping in this, uh, you know, iteration of the RX100 Mark 8 features that we have never seen before, you know. Maybe they're also gonna improve the battery life because to be honest with you, they could actually stack two or three of those batteries or even put, you know, an FZ100 battery there and, you know, just have a tiny camera with a big grip. I mean, that could be amazing. And if they would do that, that would be super awesome because how many of you guys, you know, adapt the camera to actually have an extended grip, right? So imagine that. FZ100 battery, you know, like up to three hours, four hours of video, 10-bit video recording, 4K up to 60p, maybe a better EVF, and chances are that we're gonna have the flip-off screen with the brand new menus. I think that this is what Sony has to do in order to bring to the market a very relevant RX100 camera. All right, so this is the camera that you have been waiting for, guys, and the Sony a7 IV. So, Pretty much everything that we know, what we heard, you know, we have shared it right here in the channel with you guys. But let's actually recap because there have been some talks, you know, lately about this camera. And one of the things that we know is that this camera may be announced at around third quarter of 2021. Now, when you think about third quarter, that could be beginning or end. It's kind of like waiting another year from now on to wait for that camera. But will actually Sony take that long to release that camera? And in my opinion, I think so for the following reasons. Now, I just wanna tell you a little bit about what the features of these cameras are suspected to be. The first thing that we know is that Sony is going to give us, you know, a better video camera to begin with, even though that's a hybrid shooting camera. But they know that video is super important for people and chances are that we are gonna get a camera with better video uh, capabilities. So one of the things that this camera needs to have to be a Sony, you know, release product uh, is to have 10-bit video at 4K. If the camera doesn't have, you know, 4K 10-bit, I don't think that we are gonna have a winner here, and probably a lot of people are gonna go either all the way to the Sony a7S III or stick to the a7 III, which, you know, in 2021 is just fine. Now, the second thing that that camera has to have is the flip-off screen. And I think that we're now gonna have the flip-off screen with all the touch menu. We have seen this, you know, in the Sony uh, A7C, which is the camera that could have had a touchscreen capability, especially because it was aimed to vloggers. So we didn't get that. I think that any camera that surpasses the uh, $2,900 will have 
the touchscreen capabilities with a flip-out screen, but this camera, you know, has to be somewhat near the Sony a7 III when it comes to price, and I think this camera is going to be priced this time at $2,500, and the reason why is because they just released the Sony a7C, which is a camera, uh, 17 something dollars, you know, $1,800, and when you think about it, the Sony a7 III, at least for video, in my opinion, is a better camera. Also, I found the color being much better than the colors on the Sony a7 III. So Sony has to add those features that we mentioned before, the flip out screen. The EVF, we're probably gonna see a slight improvement. I believe it's gonna be 3.6 million dots. Uh, you know, we're now getting the one that the Sony um, uh, a7R 4 has, which is at about 5.6, uh, I think, million dots of EVF. And they could have actually upgraded to that one because most likely the uh, Sony a7R 5 is going to have the brand new 9.4 million dots EVF. Anyway, so the Sony a7 IV is not gonna do, uh, you know, 4K up to 120 like some people were saying. I think the Sony scan a cap it at 60p. We are gonna have, you know, 10 bit. We're not gonna have all the codecs that we have in the Sony a7S 3 you know, much more like the ones that we have right now in the Sony a7 III. And it's going to be a great camera. Now, one of the things that a lot of people are talking about is that this camera may also have a brand new sensor and we could see in this camera a 30 or 32 megapixel sensor. Now, one thing that we know is that Sony has been doing a lot of development in the sensor department. So probably we are gonna see a sensor with a 32 megapixel sensor that is gonna perform way better in light than prior versions. So these are gonna be three incredible cameras that we are expecting to arrive in 2021. Let me know which camera interests you the most, guys. And as always, subscribe to this channel for more content like this one. See you on the next one.